Let's talk about the absolute best plugin for Obsidian. Even better, it is a core plugin. You don't even need to install anything. It should already be live in your vault as we speak right now. Go check, it'll be there. Look for Graph View. Hello, welcome to Plus One Creator, where I want you to be a more profitable, successful creator. And in order to do that, you have to have a personal productivity system at the core of everything that you do. The more creative you are, the more important it is to have this system at the heart of everything you've got going on, which is why I love Obsidian. And this feature is fantastic. It's really cool. You're gonna love it. So I want to show you some ways to use it, some interesting ways to use it, and then we'll talk about the best things to accomplish with it. So without any further ado, let's dive into it. And as always, we are back into the trusty old YouTube vault. And let's go into our settings by command comma and go to core plugins automatically in the search bar up here and type in graph and graph view is the one that we're looking for. It's on and there are no settings for it. You, you don't have anything to mess with. This is just what you get. Here it is. So we'll close it and there are a couple ways of doing this, which you can hit command P for the command palette and then type in graph and open graph view. And here in the command palette, you might see a keyboard shortcut. Uh, mine is command G. So I can be here, hit command G and here is the graph view, which is actually pretty cool. All right. And you want to hit the gear to see all of the different settings and everything that um, you've got here. So I've got these from a previous uh, kind of playing around with it to see what's going on. And yeah, uh, let's just go through. You can go here to tags and see what tags are included and I think by default they are green so you can see all the tags that are connected to different files and notes and that kind of thing attachments you can include those and then see what those attachments are connected with here's what that looks like I don't have all that many attachments but it looks like they are by default yellow and you can see those Existing files only. This is important if you have a lot of placeholder um, notes that don't exist yet. They are in their ghostly state. You have made a link to a note that doesn't exist yet. You haven't clicked on it to make it real. So they are kind of in that superposition of they exist, but not really. So you can turn this on and it will get rid of those notes that you're referencing but aren't present in your vault yet. So if you have a lot of those, you can toggle whether they're visible here and, and that'll help clean up your graph if you'd like that. Orphans, these are the notes that don't link to anything else. So if you get rid of the orphans, which that sounds pretty brutal, you can only see the notes that have a relationship to other notes, either by linking or tags, that, that kind of thing. So as you can see, there are a fair number of notes in my vault that aren't connected to anything, and yours might be different. Now, here in groups, you can expand groups and then color notes based on their title or connection or tags, that kind of thing. So here we can see gameplay and this is a heavy node that I created for my information architecture demonstration about how to play role-playing games using Obsidian. And going back to the graph, we can see gameplay. 
And, and as you saw, when I clicked on the node, it took me to the note that it's representing. So you can drop into and out of notes from your graph view, which is kind of cool. But here, we'll type in gameplay and then anything titled gameplay. But there's traits and let's see what this is. And we'll open up the sidebar and see gameplay is connected to this note. But let's see if there's a property called gameplay. Nope. So that's that's it. That's why this one's red and this one's red, but uh, nothing else is because gameplay is connecting to it, I believe. Now here, let's see what else we can do. All right. Um, let's go file gen echo, just the character name. And for some reason, nothing happens here or yeah, there it is. So the one file named gen echo shows up, but if we delete that, then other stuff connected to gen will show up. So you can create different groups based on associations, file paths, basically the same thing that you would use for a search, you can use as a qualifier for what color to make things. So if you really want to go crazy with this, you can color code a lot of different files and associations and just have a lot of color associated meaning to the graph that you're looking at, which is really cool. And also, in addition to the groups here, you can also search for things that are connected or mention the search term that you're looking for. So these are the, the files that have something to do with Jin. So these are all connected and the character sheet, I think, is included because I used it as the template that's connected to this file. Now, what's really cool is that if you don't want something to show up, hit minus and it will take it out. So let's see how we can get Jin out of here. Yeah. So that's, uh, that parentheses and then there there he is parentheses gen go and then gen is gone so if you want to get rid of things then just put a minus in front of it and as you can see you can remove multiple files multiple associations so that you can go it's not this it's not that and then whatever is left over you can sort through to try to find whatever it is that you're looking for, which is really cool. So we'll clear that out. And now we've got everything here and the arrows are kind of cool. So you can see that making moves and abilities, making moves links to abilities, but abilities does not link to making moves. So you can, show relationships and directionality of inbound links versus outbound links. And as we're noticing, as you mouse over a node, it will prioritize the other notes that link to it and dim everything else that it's not connected to without having to remove everything or go to the search filters and minus a whole bunch of stuff. So that's kind of neat. So then you can change text fade, how much it's going to fade when you mouse over it, I think. Uh, node size, you can make things bigger or smaller so that you can see it more easily. And if you've got a lot of things like this, it might help you out to be able to mouse over it but also depending on your, your zoom scale, this might be too much and then it's difficult to see what's what. So you can play around with node size, node size, 
and you can play with the arrow thickness, which it's the, the thickest one is not all that thick in my book. So I don't know, uh, what level you would like, but for me, this is, uh, I keep it near the top of that. And then forces is how much should everything congregate to the center? So the center force will bring everything together. Less gravity will make it uh, kind of drift apart so that they've got a little bit more room. And then the repel force is how much do other notes want to be away from each other? So as you can see here in kind of the center constellation, everything wants to be a little bit farther away from every other node rather than congregating together because they're related. So we can bring down the repel force and the, they're a little bit happier being closer to each other. And then the, the link force is, again, how close these are to each other. So we can bring that down. And now they can spread out a little bit farther from their parent nodes and each other as well. Or we can do the link distance. We can go really far or link force. So yeah, just play around with these forces and then you'll be able to get a view that that you like that that works well for you and then animate is pretty cool you click animate and it will show you through time based on when each note was created how they're connected and how they relate to each other so this is this is really neat to, to look at and see your vault populate through time as you're connecting more and more ideas. And then you can see the, the big massive node that lots of things are connected to. And the more notes that a single note has connected to it, the bigger that node gets. So the bigger the node, the more important that note is in your vault to other notes. So that's another detail about what sense this makes. So that's kind of all the, the options that you can, you can have. And then if you wanted to see that time-lapse animation without having to open up all of this other stuff, you can click the magic wand and it will do pretty much the same thing. It'll go back through that, that animation. So that is graph view this might be one of my shorter videos but hopefully i've gone over everything that you would need in order to get get going and now i want to go back to the good camera to explain some of the things that you can accomplish using graph view so see you there what oh hi i thought i was gonna take a little bit longer than that anyway yeah um so what can you accomplish with graph view? I, I don't know. The promise is that you can see the way that your notes connect and discover interesting new connections between ideas. And I, I've never seen that happen. I, I really haven't. <laughs> I don't, graph view is really one of those things that is super cool. It's impressive to folks that are new to Obsidian. And if you're trying to get somebody into Obsidian, you go, look at what this can do. Isn't this fantastic? And that's probably the last time they're ever going to use graph view. I, <laughs> I just, I, I don't, I don't know why it's there. I love that it's there. I love seeing it and showing it off. But again, as part of my personal productivity system, I don't really use uh, graph view at all for anything because the search function, I usually just use search, the search bar in the sidebar anyway and because my vault is so big with thousands of notes and 
and videos and all those attachments. I mean, it's more than 70 gigs. My vault is more than 70 gigs large. So for graph view to index all of that and then to render all of that, my laptop gets really warm really quick as it tries to figure all that out. So yeah, hopefully you'll find it useful Please, if you do have some interesting way that you leverage graph view, let me know about it. I would love to know how you've been using it. And if you've gotten this far, amazing, congratulations. And if you would, let me know that you're still here by giving the video a like. That'll let me know that you wanna see more stuff like this, especially about Obsidian and personal profitability and productivity and success and all that kind of thing. And if you're ready to make it official, consider subscribing to the channel because that's everything that I do here is trying to help there be one more creator in the world and hopefully that's you. And yeah, thank you so much for hanging out. I'm going to trust YouTube to show you the next video of mine that it thinks will be the best fit for you. And that's it. Uh, as, as I always like to say, remember, if you can change your mind, you can change your life.